Hi class, I just wanted to introduce myself to you um, so you have a face behind the computer. I um, don't really like this format necessarily for this dialogue with you guys. Um, I mean, especially I don't like recording videos of myself um, looking at myself on the screen. But I just want to tell you a little bit about myself so you know I'm a human behind here, not just some kind of autonomous automaton robot just going yes I will answer your art questions so I am uh, a sculptor mostly in training I went to UC at Irvine for my master's degree and Cal State Long Beach for my undergraduate degree I have a family with two boys and I'm married to an awesome wife who I love um, we my both my boys are under the age of two or under so I'm not getting as much sleep as I would like. I make different types of art. Um, besides sculpture, I also like to make comics and draw quite a bit. And I've done some design work in the past. My wife's a web designer, so I help her with some design stuff sometimes. So that's part of my whole aura ethos experience. Um, I'm from Redding, California. So I've lived in California a lot of my life. Um, um, besides the far northern part of California, also I lived in LA for a really long time when I was going to school. And I went to a community college in California in Reading for about two years before I went to a four year at a CSU and then a UC for my grad work. So I've been to every kind of California college. If you guys ever have any questions about my experiences at schools or like thinking about transferring, feel free to hit me up. Um, yeah, I was going to show you a little bit about my artwork, that way you can kind of see what I've done. So I'm going to pause this and show you my screen. Um, I won't go on and on too much about it because it uh, is not really my style to focus on my work very much in front of my classes. I want you to make your own types of work and study the work you like and, you know, for art history to not think about what I've made when you write it or when you're in my other classes, I don't want you to think about kind of copying what I've done. So um, I just t show you a little bit of it so you can kind of see the type of things I've done over the years. All right. So I'll show you a bit of my portfolio. Um, it's a long slideshow, but I'm not going to go over it bit by bit. Um, just to give you an idea. I started off in school long ago, kind of as a painter, like a lot of people do. And I started kind of painting but installing it in galleries with these statements about what painting is and kind of asking questions about it being more than just paint but a physical space and the way the gallery operated. So I started making these kind of abstract paintings from um, film stills and collages that I made that were about a lot of intense things but kind of ended up being really abstract. Um, this is like a still from a film with a car driving away. This one was one, a collage that I did, I had a bunch of things um, talking about, you know, the way the world is and stuff, but they ended up being really abstract. At a certain point, though, I kind of got where I realized I didn't want to do that anymore. I was more interested in these type of questions, so I started interrogating the idea of formalism and, like, Jackson Pollock and who he was and um, as a mythos or a persona, and so I was making the ideas of house painting equipment into like their paintings and then these are the same type of statements made dramatic so I was method acting and I became like trying to deal with this idea of me being that persona um, of a person who smokes as an art student and like Jackson Pollock his cigarette butts everywhere on the ground and then I kind of got into this whole thing of like destroying the art or getting rid of it or this process of making by removing it. And I did this whole project where I destroyed, um, it was a video art project where I destroyed all the art in the gallery and then shaved my head and beard and then buried it all in the ground in a particular place as an exchange with a site. So pretty intense art school type of stuff. And I started writing about the process and the kind of process of change, and I did these a series of prints. This is actually a lithography, not just writing. 
um, where I print, I did printmaking where I was writing backwards because it's like in verse and then doing watercolors and I made them into origami. I burnt them out in the process and cast them as bronze objects. That got me into this idea of like site exchanges or change being a site and um, so I started working with my friend Chris Denson about this pit mine that's out in the desert and we took samples of the pit mine and things and we started writing about it and we decided to make our own mine in the gallery our own site and um, include the bags of salt cast and castings from the actual location and then these statements are about it and it was an environment where it was being dehumidified and growing crystals that's called installation art and it was getting trodden on by two people going in the gallery at once and they're messing it up and changing it um, that's the whole kind of idea in my work where I was doing with sites another thing that I was kind of simultaneously doing is working this is all when I was in CSU Long Beach with origami um, as a way of talking about something being flat and becoming three dimensions so I think you see a commonality I'm dealing with that a lot and with that is a kind of idea about work and um, who it is that works and what good, what work is artwork and kind of anti-art type of questions. And this is my BFA show. Um, this back here is a palm cast into um, plaster, giant slab. It weighs about 500 pounds. And it kind of created its own mark by the way that the green palm tree was bleeding into the plaster. I was using things like sawhorses in those forms and changing them. We cast crushed cans and detritus from the streets of Long Beach and hiding things and casting and coating them. This is a palette I completely refinished and made smooth and beautiful. And this is actually like a wax casting of a can. There's a bunch of the exact same can. So I'm kind of questioning the value of art and minimalism and um, a bunch of things about being someone who's worked hard and how what kind of work matters as artwork and a chair where I was sitting and thinking in a lot and then I put a plumb bob next to it to talk about what's um, right and thinking and sort of like uh, plumb bobs define space and so that was a whole sort of thought pattern that I was working through was like um, what makes a mark what's a valuable mark what makes art what is art also but like this kind of idea of like an actual parable something thinking about something and um critiquing it but also like your own work and your own process so i smoked a lot during this time in my life and there's so there's a lot of cigarettes and things as part of it and castings this is like a bronze casting of a dust mask and i was kind of like making fun of questioning like formalistic artwork and um like people who make these giant cubes and that's all it is and they make it for thousands of dollars versus like this is painters tarps that I used and made it had someone commission them to make them into curtains with silk at the back of them so I think I was mythologizing still kind of art and talking about value through multiples something basic like beautiful things like crushed cans and regular things to try this actually having a sort of beauty this is a cast palm piece of palm bark that became bronze these are cast aluminum and part of that was me thinking about marking space like art is here this is art this is a representation of art and I carried on with that into my MFA where I was marking spaces um, and thinking about them as being art and marking it this is like early work in my MFA and that same idea of like monuments and kind of anti-monuments and marking space and what it means, like I called this a flag, um, what the space is that you're in, and sort of dealing with things of like even, these are like thinking about like scars, but also the way that the material of um, aerosol paint has toluene in it and it melts styrofoam. So kind of making things on top of each other and building them up. It got me into this idea of paper making and book burning and print making and how um, I could use my junk mail to make my own paper. And so when you do a 
printmaking, when you make a print, you have to burn the plate after the addition. It got me thinking about burning things. But first I started making paper. And I was using junk mail to make paper. And so, and I had made my own printing press. Someone actually, uh, someone helped me make it. And I was making paper, and this is a paper making press. So I was started thinking about making my own tools to make the work, and the tool being a piece of artwork unto itself. So this is a functional thing, but also a piece of artwork. I'm doing a lot of woodworking and um, casting. And so I started using my press to um, print things, and I was like, I'm going to print a slab of unfired clay, and the breakage and the way it keeps breaking is going to become the piece. So how the pressure of it is, is the piece. And I was like, okay, well, I have to burn up my printing plate. And I said, okay, so I'll have to make a burn to burn my printing plate. And then I started getting me thinking, why don't I use books to um, print and to print plates? And then I, I was starting to do that. And then I was like, okay, if I print with them, then I have to burn them because you can't keep your printing plate. And it got me into this interesting headspace of a uh, book burning. And also, kind of a bad pun, but like also the idea of censoring knowledge, because I was thinking a lot about how uh, what's popular in, in the world of knowledge and how things kind of excluded or put into it. And so I started actually burning books, but not telling people what books they were, because I didn't want it to be about the particular books and casting in resin to keep a record of it. So those are resin casts. But I realized I didn't like them just being square. So they didn't reference the book enough. So I decided I have to actually cast the shape of the book. So burn them and then put them in a, in a mold, inside of a mold, so I could keep the shape of the book inside of it. And this is one of my first ones. That's the mold. That's still uncast. That's the book. It turned into charcoal because it smoked out inside there. And at the same time, I realized I want to start trying to think about this idea of redaction of newspapers or when they have legal documents that you can't keep some of the information. So I started, I took a whole book, a poetic book, and decided to redact it, take out everything, but leave only the subject and the um, movement words like above and, I mean, over, those are called prepositions. No, not the right word. I'll have to think about this. And making them into long scrolls and using glue to save part of the text and then remove the rest of it. So I, I would go through the whole text and find all those words, the, the, and, a's, and all that, to um, say that's where the subject would be. And then any of the words, let's say, give you a relationship to it and then just save those dots and make a frame around it kind of getting confusing what i'm saying but i can tell you more if you want and i started burning out them individually at the same time i was still working on these other ones so i ended up with a show of 52 burnt books some of them i kept in the ash state in mold and some of them i cast in resin like these and put into holders like this is supposed to be like a podium where you speak, seven books. And they all had names that were like dedicated to people. So it was like rededicating the books. And this one's kind of a piece. This is when you're looking at the podium, there's this book. Because if you're standing there ready to talk and you have no notes, you're having to deal with the loss of the text. And so I saved them with resin so they become like an index or a copy of it that references the original. Before I burnt them, I would print the print the cover of the book as a printing plate and use it. I have 52 of those and they look like this. I would They have a record of all the use because of the way I was doing it with oil-based ink, wherever people's fingerprints were built up more, you would get more ink and the type of paper uh, changed it and also the wording and things like that. Since then I've done a lot of ceramics um, and carried on with sculpture kind of interesting made this is an urn I made for one of my friends dad's ashes kind of a rough style that I, he liked and I made that um you know and I'm working on a show right now I don't have a lot of images of it where um different types of casting and things that I'll 
and painting maps and stuff like that. So I did a lot of um, ceramics after that and kind of um, did some different type of illustration projects and stuff too. So that's kind of giving you some of the interests that I've had in style, sometimes kind of rough, but I like this anti-aesthetic beauty in it. I think if you are, you know, interested in making art in particular ways, I like processes, and so I've worked with a lot of different type of processes. So if you ever had any technical questions, casting, foundry, woodworking, metalworking, you know, uh, cement, clay, things that are operational, making paper, you know, a lot of different, I've done a little bit of glass blowing, so a lot of different type of things throughout the years, um, sound, art, kinetic art. So if you're interested in different things, I can talk to you about it. And, um, you know, for your project, if you have projects you're working on either in class or not in class, just, uh, you know, always feel free to reach out to me about it. Photography, I've done, you know, a lot of different things. So I like, I like making art. I like talking about it. I like, you know, being able to be in class with you guys even more than online. But this is, you know, um, still going to work as a good format. And uh, look forward to, you know, having more interactions over, over the computer. Just want to give you kind of a little bit of a face to everything so you don't feel like I'm just a random person. I am a random person. So a lot of you have met me. But some of you will just be a random person too until maybe you take another class with me in person in the future. All right. So take care, guys. This is me when I was uh, 25, probably. <laughs> Have a good day.